So I'm glad that you are all here. And in the very beginning, before we even start with our first um, uh, keynote presentation, um, I need to tell you what the whole thing is about. And unfortunately, that cannot be done in uh, five or ten minutes. So it will take a little longer because it's a complex story. And I apologize already to the ones among you who already know parts of the story. Those are the people who together with us prepared this project called MetaNet or Meta. They will know some of that story. They have heard some of the things before, so sorry, bear with us. After that, we will have a keynote talk that will not be about MetaNet. Okay, so what is this theme tank? Um, it's probably something that will occur only once in the world. Yeah? It will be here one day and then either you were there when it happened or you happened not to be there and then you may never find out or hear from others. It's, as you can see, it's not really a university place, it's not a symposium, not a colloquium, not another type of established academic event. It's not a conference center either, so it's not a conference or not one of these workshops that actually are small conferences and have nothing to do with work and nothing with shop. It's not a consultation meeting at the European Union. If you look around, there's nobody here from the European Union. Nobody from the Commission is here. Yeah, nobody. So you can say what you want. Yeah. <laughs> Speak up and not just that we did on purpose because we wanted to avoid that people just summarize in their discussion statements the next proposal they are going to submit in the call three months later. So, and it is really planned just as a brainstorming meeting for presenting, developing, discussing brave ideas, I hope, that may shape our research and funding for the coming 10 years. Why do we have it now? There's a strange coincidence, yeah? it, uh, it's a really strange coincidence. Uh, we started this new project that I'm going to talk about in a moment, just very recently, and we are coming now to the point where we solicit input, feedback, and that happened at the same time when many people reminded me, they said, um, wait Hans for your birthday was some round birthday that happened recently. Yeah? You didn't do anything, but in the German, in the European continental academic tradition, you are supposed, this is one of the birthdays where you have to do something. Yeah? Or you quit your job and go earlier. Yeah? That's the other possibility. But you, you have to do something yeah? at certain times. And I see very few people who are in the audience, who, and I remember they had similar events <laughs> at, at a certain point. I even attended some of them. Yeah? And so, and, and since I, 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 I was hoping to invite some of my collaborators and people from other countries here, plus the people who work with me every day all together, I thought this is really maybe a good mix also for brainstorming. If they are here in Berlin already, why not exploit this moment yeah, and pick their brains? Why let them go without making a fool of themselves and saying outrageous things? So why let them go get away easily? And so then we combined these uh, events. And let's hope, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but if it doesn't, don't show it. Yeah? I mean, just pretend that it was the most stimulating you ever had when you come tomorrow to the party and say, wonderful, now I know what what we are going to do in the next years to come. And if I hadn't come, I would really not know in my research uh, how to continue. So I will start with an overview of this project uh, called MetaNet, brief overview. And this thing I can make, sure, make short, especially for the Europeans, but then there are not just Europeans here. One core component of our European Union that we live in that we surround us is this common market with a single information space that works with two dozens national languages and many regional languages. This ambitious endeavor is indeed an unprecedented social experiment to keep all these languages. Yeah? If you remember or if you think about places like Japan 
or China or the US, there's one main working language. Yeah? And only the European Union is trying to do this other thing with 23 official and maybe 57 unofficial languages and so on. So if it works, the multicultural union of nations will prosper and serve as a model for the peaceful and egalitarian cooperation of people in other parts of the world, let's say Africa, Southeast Asia, that also have lots of languages. But if it fails, Europe will be forced to choose between either sacrificing cultural identities or economic defeat. One, yeah, that's our choice. And by the way, this is a language, not a political map. Yeah? You saw that. So the major challenges are preserving the European cultural and linguistic diversity, securing at affordable costs the free flow of information and thought across language boundaries, and providing each language community with the most advanced technologies for communication, information, knowledge management, so that maintaining their mother tongue does not turn into an economic or social disadvantage to that language community. So, and there's clearly maybe a conflict of goals, yeah? So we have these 23 languages that we need to preserve, but then all EU inhabitants should have equal access to information. Where are we today? Research? No, we all hope the European Union, the people, the politicians, they hope that language technology, that information technology in general will help in this big effort, in this big endeavor. But where do we stand? So research has made considerable progress in recent years. We had many successful projects and many unsuccessful projects funded by the EU and national programs. But the pace of progress is really not fast enough to meet the three challenges within the next 10 to 20 years for 57 languages. Uh, it's simply, I mean, if we extrapolate from how long it takes yeah, to fill all the gaps that we have for all the languages, if we go on in the same speed, no way that we will have all these languages covered with the needed technologies. So then, of course, we have to ask ourselves the question, can progress be accelerated? Yes, probably, but only if the relevant stakeholders, the research communities, LT industry, users, language communities, funding programs, policy, make, policy makers, they team up for some major push. Society can do quite a bit yeah, when it comes yeah, at, at least in, in, in many areas, yeah, uh, society has changed rapidly when it comes to mobility, when it comes to communication. Yeah, lots of things have been achieved, but not by the type of funding and not the type of operation that we right now in language community, in language processing are used to. So we need some alliance. Yeah, we need something bigger. So then, Ah, okay, let me do something else now. I normally don't do that, but uh, at this case, I will t talk about, uh, give you a very short anecdote. Yeah? So it came up, I, I had the idea for this when at a recent meeting at the European Union um, offices at the European Commission in Luxembourg, uh, Roberto Cencioni, who is responsible for Language Technology Unit, he told us very proudly, and he's right to be proud, he said he helped, he, he pushed quite a bit, and he got us, uh, what was the figure then, 20 million euro for the next calls. And he said, or oh, 10 to 20, 20 million euros for the next so-and-so calls. Yeah? And, and it is, of course, a big achievement. Yeah? It was, it was really a big achievement. The same morning, the same morning, I read something in the newspaper that connected to an experience I had many, many years ago. We had a joint project with Bulgaria, with people in Bulgaria, and I got stuck on a piece of road next to Sofia. There was a big traffic jam, yeah, and I really was stuck in the middle of this traffic. And, uh, and standing there, and people told me about it. L let me see where it is now. This is Sofia, here, Bulgaria, Sofia, here it is. Yeah, this little red thing, do you see this little, this tiny little red thing there? This is the, this is the piece of highway. That's the highway that goes south to the Turkish border, yeah? Do you first take it if you go to places like Borovets? And it was always traffic jams, yeah, always, all the time. 
So it's the Lulin Highway that was then built with the European Union help. The Lulin Highway, you know it, yeah. <laughs> and it costs 137 million euro. But then there was, of course, a cost overrun. Yeah? You never can expect all the things that you find on the road. And uh, the EU contribution was 102.8 million euro. And they did it in two years. It was completed in two years. Yeah? It was completed. So what the hell does the Lulin Highway have to do with EU LT research? Uh, actually, I have to confess absolutely nothing. But taking the importance of the preservation of linguistic diversity and the high priority compared to the traffic jams yeah, that we all experienced, um, couldn't we all together, researcher industry users, convince the politicians to spend the equivalent of 93 kilometers maybe? Yeah? pick any number, 93 kilometers of highway, to, let, to really help that the linguistic diversity gets preserved, that would be 500 million euro, yeah? roughly calculated. And it's really not too much. I mean, if you just read the, um, when you open the newspaper these days, people don't count in millions anymore. Yeah? There's no financial article that is below a billion. Yeah? So million is not even, I mean, we are the only ones who talk about millions. Yeah? In other fields of society, this is nothing. Yeah? So under certain conditions, we may be able to convince them, but not with the type of project proposals we are getting now, not with the type of presentations we do, not the way that we are organized and present ourselves. So how can we create such an alliance? Now there's an old proverb, science is changing the world, but scientists can hardly change their socks. And uh, how can we do that? Yeah. So our science can do it, yeah? but we are not really, we don't know how to get things changed in the world. So the mechanism that we need would have to look a little bit like this. Yeah? We would need a strong communities with ties into other R&D communities, with a network into industry and public administration, with enough visions and plans. And that gives us visibility and credibility that we have this long-term plans. Then we get powerful support from many sectors. We get massive additional resources. And then that strengthens the community and so on. And actually, there are a number of other fields, some of them not even working in such strategically important areas such as ours, who have managed to get that funding. There are things in, for instance, embedded intelligence and systems, ambient assisted living, the platform on smart systems integration, networked and electronic media, networked European software and services initiatives. Those were initiatives that got together they formed first maybe a network of excellence, maybe then they formed, an, or they had an IP, then they were broader, then they started, they organized in a slightly different way, they came up with visions, with, with, a, strategic compute, with a strategic research uh, agenda, uh, then they organized in either an association or a platform together with, uh, with member states, and then none of these things uh, went away with less than a couple of hundred million of funding, yeah? none of these initiatives. After after a while. That didn't happen right away. So then there was this idea that quite a number of us pushed forward, actually very much encouraged by European Union and by the European Commission, namely um, to start a little bit, yeah, working in this direction. Um, enable communication, collaboration among people with le uh, without language boundaries to work for these goals finally, for, to, for secure ring users of any language, equal access to information and so on. So and then we started Metanet and received the funding for it. It's a network of excellence with three major objectives. First, to prepare the grounds for a large-scale concerted effort that I just mentioned. Second, strengthen the European research community through networking, new schemes and structures for sharing resources and efforts. And the third one, to build bridges to other research fields, such as machine learning, social computing, cognitive systems, knowledge technologies, multimedia content. Now you may say those are three goals uh, that already require hundreds of millions, and you are actually true, um, but we have very little funding doing that. So there's initial funding just of around six million 
Yeah. From the EU contribution is about around six million, and we got it for 36 months. And those are the partners in this endeavor all over Europe. And we are currently in the process of increasing this network. There are three new consortia who have submitted proposals last week and will probably, if their proposals are granted by the European Commission, so if the reviewers, some of you may be among the reviewers, yeah, the reviewers like these proposals, then they will become part of this network. So there will be, in addition to these, uh, some more consortia yeah, coming so, so that we get broader coverage in Europe. And those are, as I already mentioned, the action lines. First, the community building with a shared vision, strategic research agenda. The second one, working on sharing resources, building on work of Flairnet, Claren, and you know all these names yeah, there, who have already worked on, on, on research resource infrastructures, building on their work and then continuing it. And the third one is building bridges to neighboring technology fields. So how do you do this community building? Uh, there are certain things that you need to do. You need to survey the field. So you need to know what types of technologies are missing for what language. But the set of technologies missing is so large that it's easier to collect what you get already. Yeah? So it's easier to count what you have and then you take the complement of that. Then create a shared vision that feeds into a strategic research agenda and then build a multiplayer community and spread knowledge. So I won't go into this too much now, but there will be very soon, we have already put uh, the candidates together, there will for three areas, one is translation localization, another one is interactive systems, and the third one is access to knowledge and multimedia, media information. For these three areas, there will be vision groups, mainly by industrialists, but also by researchers, and starting developing visions, and out of these visions, a strategic research agenda will be developed. So those are the vision groups and so on. I'll jump over that, and we are now at this point. And the idea is actually that we start here, down here, from this research community, then have the meta, uh, get all the other industries involved and build this kind of alliance. So now there's a danger that has to do with the fact that we are sitting here today. Society will not support large-scale efforts for commercial applications that we would have anyway in a few years. So that if the vision groups come together and they are industrialists, who are interested in making money soon, there is always the danger that some of them, instead of thinking far ahead, they will just try now to bring in the ideas that are in their longer range business plan anyway. Yeah, they will tell, they will squeeze in because they were hoping to get funding, government funding for building what they need to build anyway, yeah, what they have already decided to do in the next few years. So, will specialized vision groups dominated by industry really develop visions that are courageous and far-reaching, exploit the full potential uh, of possible scientific progress and that are convincing enough for a major financial investment? Because the major financial investment need really to con you need to convince the, with some larger visions, the, the, the society, otherwise you won't get anything. Maybe, maybe not, we don't know. But we believe it cannot hurt that the vision groups should be provoked to come up with grand visions. And with provocation, you know how it works. In answering research questions, scientists need to be careful, accurate, honest. Yeah? Otherwise, we shouldn't get papers accepted. So when we answer questions, yeah, we have to make sure that the answers are right, correct, that we are not cheating, that we are not wrongly estimating. But in asking research questions, in dreaming up scientific and technological opportunities, scientists should not be careful, accurate, and honest. They should be creative and out courageous, maybe sometimes outrageous. Yeah? They should be far-reaching and not be too careful. 
because otherwise progress cannot be made. Yeah? All the all the best developments technologically in the in the last 50 years sounded to the majority of people crazy at first. Yeah? So you need also to come up with some things that maybe sound a little crazy. So this workshop here should be one source of provocation for the vision and planning process. So we hope to provide some stimulating, provocative input to the vision planning process. We will solicit other input from colleagues who are not present here. The ideas here could also help to solicit additional input. Participants will hopefully benefit intellectually from having been part of this collective dreaming process. We hope at least, maybe not, we have to see. And it may also help to test and sharpen own ideas, yeah, the participants, and discover possible partnerships and alliances. Therefore, in addition, yeah, I'm not too shy to present your wildest ideas. Take up to 10 years as the scope for large research actions, because that's also good. At my next round birthday, I could check what happened to that. Yeah, so. <laughs> Don't be too cautious and comment on ideas, add, modify, and extend them. So what's the procedure here? We are going to record all contributions. If somebody for religious, ethical, other personal reasons is against be his voice and picture be recorded, let us know. So there will be video recordings and some notes taken. We want to condense the notes and recordings, send these to participants for comments and last filtering, put up the results on the web for discussion and ask for more ideas, merge and condense the contributions and give those to the vision groups as input. So I think I will leave it with this. Um, a few words on the, on the uh, technical procedure. Um, as I said, we, we, ha we have a couple of um, really scheduled fixed talks and you will hear one in a moment. Um, I will hand over then to Reinhard Kaga for moderation in a moment. Reinhard uh, Kaga, many of you know him because he was uh, for the, not only is he the uh, head of the um, uh, corporate communication uh, function staff at DFKI, heading corporate communication, but he also was very much behind all the outside communication for Verbmobile, and some people who remember that, they remember that the communication work part worked quite well. And uh, so Reinhard is going to do this. And later, I also asked him to report a little bit on his many years of experience with larger projects and share a little bit his experience and his ideas about which errors to avoid or what to do yeah, when you are planning such larger efforts. Then um, one of the invited talks will be, one of the keynote talks will be today by Martin Kay of Stanford University and tomorrow we will have two more of Wolfgang Walster from DFKI. There are a few people who for other commitments cannot be here today who will join us tomorrow. One, Wolfgang is one of them and another keynote talk will be given by uh, Professor Zhong from the uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Um, many of you know him from his work in uh, machine translation and other areas of language processing. And in addition, we have a number of people um, who have um, um, already, a number, quite a number of people who have uh, already registered with us uh, some um, willingness, readiness, I mean, none of, this, none of them were pushing, but uh, we were pushing them. Um, uh, readiness, willingness to talk. So for today, we had actually planned Manfred Pinkal, but it could be that he's only coming tomorrow. Have, have you seen Manfred? So then we will probably exchange him, put, schedule Manfred for tomorrow. 
then um, uh, Nicoletta for today. Dan, are you? You are there and prepared, Dan Flickinger. And then uh, Reinhard Karger before the break. And then we have a list of people for after the break, but we are going to fix. Now I got new input yeah, on who's going to talk, and I'm going to fix the um, agenda according to this new input. And then I would uh, also um, ask you to participate in the discussions. And if something else comes to your mind, please come up and, and uh, see, uh, and not, not come up right, right now, but uh, later and uh, say something or tell me and then we can maybe squeeze in another statement. Because right now, on purpose, we did not squeeze the program so much, otherwise we wouldn't have any time for discussion. And if at a certain point, at, towards the end, yeah, there's no discussion anymore, that would be a real shame to be in Berlin without anything to do, right? <laughs> With this weather. <laughs> so, so I, I mean, if we have everything discussed to the very end and people feel more like going, yeah, there's no reason yeah, to stay and uh, to come up and uh, make up issues that are non-issues, then we could finish er earlier. But I think, th the way I know the people, there will be lots of discussion going on. So, then, uh, let me then uh, hand over now to somebody who really doesn't need an introduction. Um, it's uh, Martin Kay, who is a professor at uh, Stanford University. Uh, who has worked for many, many years before at, uh, in, in one group that everybody in the field perfectly knows, namely the language processing group at the, what used to be called Xerox Park, is now the Park Palo Alto Research Center. Martin has also been connected with European research by taking part in some of our projects at Saarbrücken, at DFKI, by teaching in, having taught in uh, Geneva, Saarbrücken, many other places, Prague in, in, in Europe, and by having been evaluator. I think maybe the only evaluator who has been, uh, who has evaluated Eurotra and Verbmobil, yeah and been very critical in both cases, if I remember right. <laughs> and so he has lots of experience in, in, in this area. More introduction is not needed. Martin, would you come up and present?